Bowling Green, Kentucky. It's time for a Conference USA Ohio Valley Conference showdown in the non-league play just a couple of days after Thanksgiving, and we have a good one on tap for you today from Bowling Green. He's Tim Scarborough. I'm Nate Gatter, courtside here in Bowling Green for Western Kentucky and UT Martin. And, Tim, uh, we're expecting a, a good ball game today and an exciting one for people, if only tuning in, to finally get a look at the man in the middle for the Hilltoppers, Jamari and Sharp. Yeah, it's not every day, and I'm around tall people a lot, but, man, 7'5", you just don't see it every day. But he's not just big. He's skilled. He's talented. Does a lot for this team and expect him to try to dominate this game. When you think about what he does in the paint, he had a triple-double the other day. It was like an ice cube good day. Blocking shots, rebounding, and scoring. He just does a whole bunch. It was his first start, and to get a triple-double, you're saying, hey, coach, keep me in the starting lineup. And Coach Rich Stansbury has done just that. Take a look at that lob. Easy finish for Jamarion Sharp. And look for him again to really patrol the paint, changing shots, not just blocking them. That's a very important aspect of his game, but he can score at the other end as well. Brings a lot to the table, and as he progresses as a junior now, look for him to continue to get better with more playing time. Hopkinsville, Kentucky native, seven foot five, and no surprise he will jump for Western Kentucky. In the home whites, he'll go up against David Dedinko, the Russian transfer junior for UT Martin in Navy. Western Kentucky has the opening possession. It's Hamilton, Anderson, Frampton, McKnight surrounding Sharp. UT Martin has Curry, Jeffries, Simon, Henderson, and Dedinko on the floor to start the game. And Frampton is off the mark with the entry pass for Sharp, which uh, is a concern, these turnovers for Western Kentucky. It really is. They average 18 a game. Not to be outdone, their opponents are averaging 19.2 a game. So already you see the turnover bug. You know, uh, da Davion Knight, McKnight is the guy who has the ball a lot, number 20 in white, and he has cleaned up some of that, but he almost had a triple-double with turnovers versus Memphis because he turned it over 10 times. But, you know, expect him to get better with Cam Justice in the lineup, another ball handler. Davion doesn't have to play as many minutes. There's Davion McKnight. He's had a big season. He's relied upon to do an awful lot for Western Kentucky this year, and he's fouled on the drive. McKnight averaging uh, nearly 16 points a game to lead the team. Seven rebounds tied with Sharp for the team lead and almost five assists. Combination when you uh, add in his three steals, only one other player in Division I is averaging all of those numbers, Jalen House of New Mexico. Frampton for three, and he hits it. That's a good sight for Rick Stansbury in the Hilltoppers. Frampton's been off to a slow start, but he can stroke it. And I talked to Frampton before the game, telling him about my experience as a senior. I was two for 20, my first 20 from downtown, but I kept playing. I had a broken finger. I got better, and after that, I ended up shooting 40% for the season. So the season's young. Look for him to really start to knock it down. He's found the mark. He feels a lot more confident than he was even a game ago. K.J. Simon has the first deuce for the Skyhawks. Sharp has it knocked away from behind by K.K. Curry. Another Western Kentucky turnover this time in the live ball situation. And the three is short from Henderson, who follows it up and sticks it from mid-range. Nice job cleaning up his own shot. And right now, you, you can look at this UT Martin team and you can tell they really want to get out and run. Michael Henderson able to knock down a second chance opportunity. Frampton wants another. Too strong, sharp on the offensive glass and powers it back off the heel. And there's two he would certainly like back. The Dean go a deep one and he hits it. Couple of early threes for Dedinko. The second one goes down. Not just range for the big guy, but he's stepping out a good step or two beyond the arc. And he came in today shooting 46% from downtown. He's only played in three games. Knocked down five of his first 11. And that's a concern if you're guarding him. Marion Sharp wants to play under the, the goal, but he's got to go out and try to contest that shot. So you would already, already a great strategic plan deployed by the Skyhawks. You would think that's something that Ryan Ritter, I mean, of course, Tadinko has those good shooting numbers regardless, but might encourage him to do even a little bit more today, trying to pull Sharp out beyond the three-point line where he's not going to be affecting nearly as many shots. That rebound went off his hands. It ends up with Jarius Hamilton. And Hamilton, number three, another transfer in. 
second leading scorer on this team. It's a very talented group, this Western Kentucky team. Nothing unusual for Rick Stansberry's teams. Great recruiter. But, you know, they, they have some, some work to do in terms of taking care of the basketball and really taking care of the free throw line. They don't get there as often as they normally do, and they haven't really shot a great percentage so far in the early part of this season. All things you can clean up, though. Sharp turns and scores. Uh, Western Kentucky trails by two in the early going. That was a big strength and historically something that Rick Stansbury teams do really well, getting to the free throw line. And then last year, Western shot almost 80% from the three point, uh, free throw line. Curry too strong and Frampton the other way. K.K. Curry, second leading scorer on this team for UT Martin. 16 points a game. Shot an air ball, came up empty that time. Hamilton for three, and he oh. cans it. High arcing shot, didn't look necessarily look too good out of his hand, but he found the bottom. It, it's a, a thing of beauty when that thing splashes down from downtown, though. A great job by Jarris Hamilton, shooting 36% from three, 15 points a game. Transfer. Haven't seen a ton of Davion McKnight so far in the first few minutes. Maybe Western Kentucky happy to take a little of the load off of him. Simon misses, and there is McKnight on the glass. Yeah, and Davion is averaging 37 minutes a game of a 40-minute game. So that's a ton of minutes. He can't continue that. That's a pump right there. Nothing called. Sharp was trying to get in on the other end of a would-be Frampton alley-oop. He tripped as he was going to the rim, and it's out of bounds. Another Western Kentucky turnover. Hilltoppers have hit a couple early threes, and they lead by a point. Four minutes gone by in the opening half. Western Kentucky leads 8-7, just over four minutes gone by in the opening half from Dental Arena in Bowling Green, alongside Tim Scarborough. Nate Gatter back with you on this Saturday afternoon in Western Kentucky. And uh, Tim, certainly, Jamarion Sharp has made a, a big impact, as we thought he would in the uh, first few minutes, but uh, mostly on the offensive glass. He, he did get that one deuce on the turnaround, but I'm sure he's thinking a little bit more about throw in that would-be slam off the back iron. Yeah, that was unfortunate he didn't get to hammer that dunk down. But you can just tell by the way he moves, he's confident. You know, of course, the coaches believe in him, putting him in the starting lineup. You know, he's a really good player. And sometimes guys that big don't have the skill set. They're just big. But this guy is highly skilled, great athlete. Hamilton on the pull-up, not there. Sharp got a hand on the rebound, but it ends up with Tadinko and UT Martin the other way with a chance to take the lead. Transition defense is going to be so important tonight, today, I should say, for Western Kentucky. Because UT Martin is looking to push the ball. Inside, a nice double clutch finish by K.J. Simon, the junior from Orlando on his third Division I school, and uh, some big buckets early. And K.J. Simon played at Troy. What a lob for Josh Anderson. Doesn't need the dunk for the acrobatic finish. And KJ Simon played at Troy for Phil Cunningham, the top assistant here at Western Kentucky. So a little bit of familiarity there. Simon on the pull up, left it short, rebounded by Sharp. Here's McKnight, pretty quiet start. Good ball handling. Couldn't stick the pull up, but Hamilton on the offensive glass is foul. McKnight made that. Look really simple, dribbling through traffic. In the end, just couldn't get the jumper. But Hamilton set up with a couple of free throws. Davion McKnight, as a sophomore, remember, as a freshman last year, played a ton of minutes and really was a, a solid contributor for the Hilltoppers. Primary ball handler there. Think about it. He was in the Conference USA All-Tournament last year, despite the fact that the, the Hilltoppers came up short in the championship. Western Kentucky has made it an 11-9 lead. Hamilton has one more. And he gets both. Sort of a slow start of the free throw line for the transfer from Maryland, but that's been true for a, a lot of Hilltoppers, as Tim mentioned. Here comes a 1-3-1, one, three, one, three quarter court. This is designed to slow down the transition game, but also to be a disruptor and to give you a shorter shot clock now in the half court. And hey, if you can get a deflection and a steal and score, do that too. To Dinko, stepping out farther and farther. He's hit a couple of threes already. And Jamarion Sharp is hardly spending any time in the paint as a result. And let me tell you, Sharp was in his face that time, but David Dedenko able to splash it down again. 
from downtown. Anderson for three. Back iron, and it's rebounded by Jeffries. Curry attacks a gap past no Hamilton, but has it swatted by Sharp. <laughs> you better ask somebody. McKnight attacks. Tried to go along the baseline and turns it over. Two on one. Simons goes out for Simmons, and he hits. There he is, Simmons, grad transfer from Division II, Lenore Ryan. He can fill it up, average better than 18 points a game each of the last two years, and he has a triple to make it a three-point Skyhawks lead. And that's how you come into the game, right off the bench. Spot up in that corner, knock it down. Hamilton in the mid-range, short, and Jeffries can run the other way. Here they come. The Dinko deeper and deeper. Sharp goes up for the rebound. Oh. And then is going to get called for yep. a sloppy offensive foul. He just reached wow. out and shoved Simon almost in the chin because of the height difference. Wow. Looked yeah. like he was just annoyed swatting oh. at a fly. <laughs> yeah, the referee it like. saw it. Let's see if we can take a look on the rebound. He gets it, just kind of pushed him in the face. And, you know, that, that's, that's dangerous because when you start having – Thinking about contact above the neck, even though it wasn't intentional necessarily, he could get a, a flagrant on that as well. So, fortunately, they're just going to let him play on, but not a good foul there by Jamarian Sharp. One of those things, I guess, at seven foot five, you can't get away with much frustration like that. Right. People are going to see it. Jeffries gets it into Bernie Andre off the bench for the first time for UT Martin on the floor along with Simmons, who have both come in. Meanwhile, Cameron Justice is on for Western Kentucky, the first Rick Stansbury substitution. When you think about players over seven feet around the country, Chet Holmgren from, George, from Gonzaga comes to mind at seven foot two, probably going to be the top player selected in the 2022 draft, the way things are going. Zaga took a tough loss last night to, to Duke. Simmons, nice feed inside to Jeffries, but his shot was afflicted by Sharp. And out of bounds, a shot clock violation gives it back to Western Kentucky. That's good action by UT Martin, but seven foot five cancels out a lot. It really does. And, and as long as they allow him to hang out around that paint, they better throw a head fake or something because he's going to deflect or block or change a lot of shots there off of that dribble penetration. Another seven foot plus guy is Zach Eady from Purdue, a really good basketball team this year. Seven foot four, averaging 20 and 10. Justice can't get it and is rebounded by Chris Nick, six foot nine. Juco transfer from Bellevue, Tennessee in for the first time. And Simon is fouled by Josh Anderson. Of course, we know that the, the transfer portal has become just a, a massive part of college sports and nowhere more so than in the, in the men's basketball game. Yeah. But nobody has taken it to the extreme that UT Martin does. The Skyhawks bring back zero players from last year, zero minutes from last year. The only team in the country that can say that. In fact, uh, they're believed to be the first team since Florida A&M in 2014 to not bring back a single minute from the previous season's team. And on top of that, they have an all-new coaching staff. So this right. is really just a totally new look UT Martin program right now. And, and Ryan Ritter was hired last spring in 2021, but he really didn't get the coach last year because Bethune Cookman didn't play because of COVID. So he kind of took a redshirt year last year as a coach, huh? Entirely new roster this year. Hamilton for three. High rebound was there for a moment for Anderson, but knocked away by Simon and UT Martin the other way. And six of seven coaching and support staff are new. Simon tried to take flight. He got a piece of the rim. McKnight, offensive foul, he went over Simmons. He ran over the whole team. <laughs> Frenetic few minutes at Diddle Arena. Simon nearly had a highlight reel slam at the other end. Oh. He, and then McKnight just he, got carried away. He, he gets a, a Ja Morant A for effort in terms of the attempt. Because Ja Morant misses more dunks that get highlight reels because of the, the attempt than anybody I've ever seen. But I tell you what, that was impressive. And, you know, it really, you, you take it right at the rim at shot blockers. Of course, Sharp wasn't in the game. But Cosart off the bench, number 50, able to deter that dunk. Great defense. And maybe UT Martin just seeing no sharp in the game, and the guards are thinking, if I'm going to go right. for it, now's the time. 
Simmons goes for Curry inside, took the hit, didn't get the call, and then a whistle on the rebound goes against UT Martin. Timeout on the floor, 11.47 remains in the first half. UT Martin leads it by three early on the road at Diddle Arena. Hey, fans, it's time for... UT Martin with a 15-12 lead. A little more than eight minutes in the first half from Diddle Arena. Mentioned it's an all-new coaching staff for the Skyhawks, led by Ryan Ritter in his first year, off to a 3-3 three and three start, fifth season as a Division I head coach after four at Bethune-Cookman. Although, as we mentioned, they really only three seasons on the sideline because uh, Bethune-Cookman opted out of all sports last year. Meanwhile, for Western Kentucky, Rick Stansbury is in his sixth season. And uh, he is looking for Division I win number 399 as a head coach today. Brian Ritter, a pretty solid young coach. I believe he's in his early 30s. Simmons in transition, took a hit from Justice, but finished anyway. Five point lead for the Skyhawks. Simmons all on his own, coast to coast. And that is what I was talking about at the top transition defense they turn a rebound or a long uh, turnover into kinetic energy awfully quickly at the other end Frampton is fouled and that's already the 16 foul against UT Martin so any further and Western Kentucky will be in the bonus the rest of the way Curry picks up the foul that's his second so I'm starting to see more coaches, normally the two fouls in the first half, no matter how much time is left, they sit them. But there's been coaches starting to bring guys back, and I think that's a good thing. Brampton hits the deep two. He has five early points. Such a smooth stroke. Luke Brampton, and really the Western Kentucky fans haven't seen it this season because he struggled a bit. He was three for 26 at one point from downtown before going three for six the other night. So it's great to see him knock down shots, but he continues to be confident and he continues to let it fly. Western Kentucky went to a zone defense on that possession and uh, it yielded the first UT Martin turnover of the afternoon. And Coach Stansberry does a great job of mixing up his defenses on both the half court and the full court. So you have to be weary as a point guard on the other team of recognizing what they're doing and getting your your team ready to attack it. Anderson inside, Scoops can't get it, and the rebound off of Anderson and out of bounds. Back to UT Martin. Skyhawks uh, picked to finish 10th in the 10-team OVC after uh, the OVC, of course, lost Jacksonville State in Eastern Kentucky, so they're down from 12 to 10. It's a team that last year went 6-14 and 14 in the league, did not reach the OVC tournament. But uh, as mentioned, sort of hard with a lot of teams in college basketball, but in particular with these Skyhawks to use much from last season as indicative of anything this year. Yeah, all new faces, a new coach, which is sort of why they were picked 10th, because they're just an unknown at this point to the OVC. Simmons can't hit the three. Anderson brings it ahead for Western Kentucky and turns it over. That is a half dozen for the Hilltoppers in the opening 10 minutes. That one was sort of friendly fire unforced as Anderson was trying to make a move to the basket and simply lost the ball. It's part of the reason for this UT Martin lead. Just the one turnover for the Skyhawks, six for the top so far. And what this 2-3 zone does is it allows Western Kentucky to keep their shot blocker sharp near the rim. So you think this is an adjustment in, in large part is it to account for those couple of early threes by Dodinko? Exactly right. But now Dodinko won't get those open looks near the top of the key because there's a two-guard front out front. Simmons tried to go to Dodinko in the high post and a kick ball against Western Kentucky resets the shot clock again to 20. Western Kentucky has dominated on the backboards, plus five in the rebounding margin already. And the Hilltoppers have moved the basketball well. A three goes down off the wing. 
for Josiah Morris, freshman from Mount Washington, Kentucky, just into the game back at his home state. And he makes it a six-point lead for the Skyhawks. So it looks like Darius Simmons. Moore comes right off the bench and knocks down a three. Cameron Justice can answer. And it's out of bounds to UT Martin. A convincing start on the road. The Skyhawks are heavy underdogs, but you'd think this kind of start can give Ryan Ritter's group some confidence. Well, you just have to, that's why you play 40 minutes. I mean, Western got off to a rough start at home a couple of games ago. In fact, the season opener versus Alabama State, they held on to win down the stretch. It's a long game if you're a Western fan. You've seen this before, but once they get it going, they're a team that is a force to be reckoned with. But sometimes it takes a little longer to get that engine started. Foul called away from the basketball against Simon, his first, and the seventh against the team. It's an offensive foul, so no free throws coming for Western Kentucky, but the Hilltoppers are into the bonus for the remainder of the half. Could be a way for Rick Stansbury's team to open things up offensively a little bit. Shooting just 29% in the early going. Cam Justice, number 55, started this season as a grad assistant. <laughs> now he's in uniform. McKnight on the attack. He's fouled, left it short, and he'll get two free throws. Yeah, Cam Justice, uh, of course, played at Western Kentucky a couple of years ago on that 2019-20 team that was uh, well positioned to finally get the tops into the NCAA tournament. But of course, uh, nobody got the chance in March of 2020. And uh, Justice was back at Western Kentucky as a, a grad assistant in the athletics department. And then uh, had an extra year of eligibility left. The, the university was able to con confirm that he had a sixth year still as a result uh, in part of all the COVID stuff. And so he's playing another one in a Western Kentucky uniform. And he's made an impact on the offensive end almost right away, his second game. Back in uniform, he had 18 points. Yeah, he's averaging double figures in just three games. He's knocked down eight threes already, shooting 40% from downtown. So he's uh, doing exactly what we expect him to do. Sharp altered that shot from Simon. But more importantly to me than the shooting is having another ball handler to alleviate pressure from Davion McKnight. Justice, the lob for Sharp. What a pass, a dime from Justice, and the finish by Sharp. Great combo. Second assist for Sharp early, and it's down to a two-point Western Kentucky deficit. Back to the man-to-man, -man, and you notice how far the Denko has Sharp away from the basket. Got to be concerned about this shot right here. Another one. And there's a reason. -pointer. There's a reason to be concerned. Another splashdown from downtown. Tadinko, the first year Skyhawk, began his career with a couple of seasons at Georgia Tech. Frampton lost it out of bounds. Another Western Kentucky turnover. That's number seven at a timeout of the floor. Hilltoppers had some momentum going. Back to back buckets. Highlighted by the Justice to Sharp alley oop. But UT Martin has hit five three pointers. And the Skyhawks lead 23 18. UT Martin has an early five-point lead midway through the first half. On the road at Diddle Arena in Bowling Green, Nate Gatter, Tim Scarborough back with you this afternoon. So glad to have you along. Of course, uh, Western Kentucky, Tim, it looked for a moment there, had really seized the momentum with uh, a gorgeous alley-oop from Cam Justice to Jamarion Sharp, but uh, UT Martin able to answer back. They haven't had a lot of success in transition. UT Martin has done a great job of keeping them out of transition. And conversely, Martin has been able to get out and run themselves. It's really been kind of the difference in the game is the Western Kentucky has seven turnovers, leading to eight points off those turnovers. Tops extending the defense again a little bit. Now 1-3-1, one, one, half court. What Simmons, like. six three-pointers for UT Martin in the first 13 minutes, and this is a great recipe for success on the road. They have shot it in. Well, anytime you can knock down shots from downtown, that's a great recipe for success. They've gotten some open looks, and they've cashed them in from beyond the arc. McKnight counted plus the foul. Davion McKnight flying to the rim, and he collided with an unforgiving floor after the finish. 
Yeah, that was a nasty spill. We could hear him hitting the ground from where we're sitting, even with the headsets on. But this is quite a move. Turns the corner. The help is tardy. Able to finish in traffic. Great job by Davion McKnight, the sophomore. Goes down hard on his wrist and lower back. That's always a concern, but he appears to be okay. Cash is in the free throw. That's a, some silver lining for Western Kentucky. The Tops have not shot the ball especially well so far today, but they've hit all five of their free throws. And Davion has been solid, though. He's 76% coming into today. And he's taken a ton of them, 33 already before today's action. And an illegal screen called against Adinko, who just picked up back-to-back uh, -back personal fouls in the span of 16 seconds. He had the foul on McKnight, and now an offensive foul for a moving screen, and that's going to send him to the bench with 6.45 to go in the first half. And he's been the leading scorer today for either team with nine on those critical three-pointers that have been stretching Western Kentucky's defense farther and farther from the rim. Certainly a loss when you think about Curry saddled with two fouls as well. He's 0 for 3 from the field in just eight minutes of play. We probably won't see him anymore in the first half as well. So this is a stretch where Western can kind of make up some ground with two big, big players for UT Martin on the bench now with foul trouble. And uh, Western Kentucky in the double bonus, so Hamilton is going to shoot two after the foul called on Morris. Hamilton, six foot eight senior from Charlotte. First year Hilltopper on his third school. A couple of years at Boston College before his one at Maryland, where he was a marksman for the Terps off the bench. Has a couple of years of eligibility still remaining, counting this year as well. Now, how many years do you get nowadays? Feels like an awful lot. Third school. And he's got two more years of school. Man. They just want to make sure he gets educated. Yeah, certainly. You could be a doctor playing basketball these days with the amount of years you get. Western Kentucky has trimmed it back to a three-point deficit. Curry on Hamilton. Jeffries for Simon on the pull-up, and he sticks it. K.J. Simon has uh, hit a couple of those in the mid-range. And so they bring Simon back because they wanted to get some scoring. So they're rolling the dice a bit with the two personal fouls. But so far, that gamble paying dividends. Nearly another Western Kentucky turnover. For the most part, when the Hilltoppers have been able to hold on to the basketball, they're, they're running some good things on offense. They've gotten the foul line a lot better in this first half. Done some things well. They just have not hung on to the ball consistently enough. and give credit to UT Martin's defensive pressure on some, but there have been some unforced errors as well. McKnight draws the double, oh, scores anyway, awesome. over top of David Kemwaka. The help defense just not in his face enough, evidently. That, that's a big time shot, honestly, because that was good defense. The help came, but Davion McKnight up to the task. Curry on the pull up. Rebound controlled by Anderson. Thought about pulling up, it looked like in transition, and McKnight can get Western Kentucky into the offense. He has seven points, couple of assists already. Hamilton on the fall away, got it. How about three pirouettes on one move? <laughs> Hamilton able to finally free himself and knock it down, and now we got a one point game. That's nine for Hamilton to lead the Hilltoppers. Four rebounds as well. Simmons lost it for a moment, but Anderson tried to dive in for the basketball, and in the end fouled him. Almost lost his, his, his headband as well. <laughs> but, and you know, Josh Anderson, of course, one of the most electric players in transition, had visions of a breakaway dunk dancing in his head. Got a little overzealous defensively and picked up the personal. That's his second foul, so he will sit down. Cam Justice comes on for the tops. Curry isolated on Hamilton. Draws the help from Sharp. Henderson out of the corner, left it short, and Sharp brings in his fifth rebound. And with 
to Denko on the bench. Sharp was able to hang around the basket and provide help where Curry was isolated. Normally he would score there, but the help negated the shot. Hamilton tried to lob it for Sharp and said it's an eighth Western Kentucky turnover. Simon spins Woo! free of Sharp. What a beautiful pivot. That was big time. The amount of space he took up to get to the other side of the rim. Beautiful. McKnight cut off. Left it short, and it's rebounded by Simon. Western Kentucky has been able to close the gap a couple of times in this first half, but the Skyhawks have kept them at arm's length. Simmons has been aggressive. Three for four from the field off the bench. Great time there. Feed into the Roland Kamwanga, who didn't get the call. Frampton came over just enough to affect the shot on the help side. Kamwanga, he smoked that layup, but he felt like he was fouled. Let's see what Western can do here. Big possession, maybe tie it or cut it to one. McKnight tried to go along the baseline for Justice, but threw it away. Nine first half turnovers for Western Kentucky. UT Martin shooting 50% from three, and that in combination has meant a three-point Skyhawks lead. 3.17 to go, timeout on the floor. Tim, it feels like uh, we're beating a dead horse to some degree with UT Martin up 30 to 27 in this first half, 317 to go until halftime. And then we've been saying it since before the game even started that the issue for the Hilltoppers reliably this year has been their turnovers, and that's continued. And you know, there's been a few unforced like that right there with Josh Anderson. But this one here is just a poor decision by Davion McKnight trying to one-handed pass along the baseline. Not a lot of room for error. If you don't get it right on the guy, it's going to go out of bounds. And McKnight with four turnovers, two assists to go with seven points. But they have to clean some of these things up, the unforced ones in particular. They've given up, of the 30 points they've given up, 13 of them have been off of turnovers. UT Martin with a basketball and a three-point lead. Dadinko back in with two fouls. Simon open for three. Just a little short, and it's rebounded by Justice. From a coaching staff's perspective, what can you say to try to clean up some of this decision-making, some of the turnovers? No call either way on the rebound by Dedinko without sacrificing some of the aggressiveness that you right. want your players to have. And, and that's it. Some of it is just simple basketball. You're going to turn it over some, but you want to eliminate the ones you can, you can eliminate in terms of just mental. And that was a that great bucket, job. Yeah, it's a good example. That feels like the kind of bucket that Western Kentucky hasn't had all game because yeah. the Skyhawks just haven't given it to them. Simmons, tough off-balance shot, rebounded by Hamilton, and now Western Kentucky can take the lead. Justice for three. Western Kentucky in front. Timeout, UT Martin. It has not been the Hilltoppers' half, but Cameron Justice, without hesitation, just gave Western Kentucky the lead. Some string music being played from downtown by Cam Justice. Ripping the cords from three. That was deep. Got the handoff, and he let it fly. A splashdown from downtown. Feels like you could see the experience that he has, and that that would be a moment. can be difficult for some younger players, especially shooters, to pick their moments. When am I going to take this quick trigger three of the first little handoff after the possession? When do we want to see a little more time come off the shot clock? For him, it seems like when he feels in rhythm and he has enough room in the pocket, he's letting it go. And, and, and he should let it fly because, as you see, he's got a, a pure stroke. But the play before, Davion McKnight able to get the steal and then a simple dribble handoff and a tardy rotation cost three points for Western Kentucky to knock it down from three. So the Hilltoppers go in front at 32-30. Final two minutes of the opening half. Dadinko for three. Hits it again. He has four in the first half, and the Skyhawks are back in front. And give Ryan Ritter credit for playing both Simon and Dadenko, despite having two personal fouls. And both of them have scored a number of buckets since coming back in, saddled with those personals. Justice has Henderson right in his face. Steps back for three. <laughs> Man. Tough shot by Justice. Wasn't bad in the end, but off to the right. 
Simon cut off by the double. Henderson for three. It's all going for UT Martin. That's eight first half triples for the Skyhawks. And if they continue to shoot like that, they could come in here and steal one because they are lighting it up from downtown right now. And now another turnover. UT Martin with a four point lead with the ball. Approaching one minute in the first half. Simmons oh. all the way to the rack. He saw a little gap. No help side came. And it's a six point lead for the Hawks. That's exactly right. There's a great description. The help side didn't seal off that penetration as a result. Simon off the bench now with eight points. Another layup for him. Timeout called by Western Kentucky. First of four that Rick Stansbury has used. And he needs to talk things over with 50 seconds to go. And his Hilltopper is down by six. UT Martin has never won in this building. The Skyhawks have won three, or uh, one out of four in the series. Western Kentucky has won three. The only win for UT Martin over Western Kentucky was January of 1998, a 70-67 triumph for the Skyhawks at the Elam Center in a non-conference game tucked in the middle of what at that time was Western Kentucky's Sunbelt schedule. But this is uh, not really the first half I think anybody would have expected, and some of it is UT Martin's hot shooting, but yeah, they're Part of that is getting good looks. They're knocking down shots. And of course, that was Simmons who got to the basket, not Simon. But, you know, Simmons, Simon, tomato, tomato, right? All those guys are scoring points. Simmons with 10 off the bench, four for six from the field, two for three from downtown. And Dedenko off the uh, starter who was on the bench with foul trouble. They threw him back in the game, got a couple of buckets. Now he'll probably sit the rest of this to avoid that third foul. McKnight couldn't get it in the mid range. Nick's the rebound. UT Martin with the basketball, about a 10 second differential between the game and shot clock. And Coach Stansbury can't be happy with the defensive performance of his group in the first half, although that was a nice wall of defense there. So now Western can hold perhaps for one. Nope, they let it fly. Frampton has his shot blocked, but Sharp recovers it. Justice for three. He missed it. Rebound is loose, and it's off of Andre. Western Kentucky keeps it, so with the shot clock off, the Hilltoppers took a couple of threes, but both times they're bailed out. And to me, ill-advised shots, because you were potentially, even if you make it, giving up another possession that really they shouldn't be on defense anymore. You should hold for one shot, get the last shot, no matter what, you're gonna go into the locker room. Henderson sits down, Grant Hurst checks in. The freshman from Cleveland, Tennessee, will play these final 12 seconds on defense. Assuming Western Kentucky holds for the final shot this time, the toppers don't, but Justice gets the bucket. The ball's loose, and Ryan Ritter wanted them to stop the clock, and they did with five seconds to go. For a moment, it looked like UT Martin wasn't even going to get the ball in. And that was potentially a delay of game, but they don't call it. So let's see Here's what Simmons with two. Simmons on the pull-up. Contested three is short, so Western Kentucky's insistence on giving UT Martin the final shot of the half does not come back to hurt the Hilltoppers. <laughs> but still, they are down by four at halftime. UT Martin with some hot shooting, eight of 16 from three-point range. And the Skyhawks on the road, 18-point underdogs, leading by four. 38-34 is the advantage for UT Martin at the half. We'll be back with more here at the break from Diddle Arena and 20 more minutes still to come in non-conference action. Halftime at Diddle Arena in Bowling Green where Western Kentucky and UT Martin had a, a good first half. Tim Scarborough, Nate Gatter back with you here courtside. The Skyhawks up by four at the break in large part, Tim, because of Western Kentucky turnovers, but maybe even more so because of the hot Skyhawks three-point shooting. Yeah, I think it's time we give credit where credit is due. The Skyhawks have been red hot from downtown, and it hasn't just been one guy. Dedenko early was able to get some shots knocked down because he's able to to kind of keep Sharp out away from the bucket, and that really made them get some easy ones there. But it was guys off the bench like Simmons, who was able to knock down a jumper from the corner, and Henderson as well, number three off the bench. So they, and it's the Denko once again, a little late coming out there. And if you're not on these shooters, the way they're shooting right now, it could be a long afternoon. But so far, despite that hot shooting, and despite the turnovers, Western's right in this game. But you mentioned they, they were, 18-point uh, favorite, so not really exactly where they want to be, but for Coach Rick Stansbury, it's about getting the win. 
Yeah, certainly. This is a team, as we mentioned, in UT Martin that didn't bring anything back from last year, so it's a little hard to compare to last season, but not a good three-point shooting team a year ago and not to necessarily one that you would have been looking out for to go something like eight for 16. I think the bottom line is in college basketball, if you hit eight threes and a half and shoot 50%, you're going to have a chance to beat anybody. Yeah, that's a high rate of efficiency, and if they want that to continue, they just need to keep doing what they're doing, forcing turnovers, getting those transition opportunities, and then on the half court using their bigs to shoot the shots to bring Sharp away from the basket, and then that creates driving lanes for them as well. So they have a variety of ways of scoring, a well-coached team. But again, there's another 20 minutes to go. Expect the Hilltoppers to come out with a little bit more energy in that second half. So then let's put the pressure on you a little bit because it's easy for us to be critical and say Western Kentucky needs to stop turning the ball over so much. How do they do that, and what can this coaching staff tell the Hilltoppers at halftime to try to either hold on to the basketball more in the first place or find other ways to score? Well, you try to get them in positions that they're comfortable, and then you try to make them make better decisions. But the decisions in basketball are micro, micro decisions. Within seconds, you have to boom, boom, boom. You have to think, and it's constantly a moving thing. So sometimes the target that you're throwing to isn't there anymore, and those split-second decisions can make the difference between a turnover and a really good pass. So they just need to keep playing basketball. They can't be thinking about the turnovers. Just play through them, and eventually they're good players. They're good enough that some of those numbers will start to come down, and you'll start to see more success on the court. Quickly on the defensive end for Western Kentucky, we saw them experiment a little bit with zone to try to keep Jamari and Sharp in the paint. What did you think of, of which of the defensive options were the most successful? Yeah, I expect to see a little bit more of that 1-3-1 one, one defense that they like to deploy. They don't like to play it a lot, but they like to use it at key possessions. Look for that and then the 2-3 zone to keep Sharp near the basket where he's been very successful. Certainly a lot for Western Kentucky to think about. UT Martin on the road up 38-34 at the half. <laughs> Halftime at Dittle Arena in Bowling Green where the visitors from UT Martin leave 38-34 over host Western Kentucky alongside Tim Scarborough. Nate Gatter back with you as we get set for the second half on ESPN+. Plus. And uh, Tim, as we've talked about, Jamari and Sharp not to... Uh, Hiding from anybody, in part because he's seven foot five, and in part because of his triple double with blocks in the uh, last game this week against Alabama A&M for the Hilltoppers. But UT Martin hasn't been afraid of him even as much as he's been able to impact things defensively. No, you certainly have to take it right to the chest of shot blockers, especially ones as prolific as Sharp is. But not only is he tall and long, he's got really good timing and he's athletic. So. That's the only way you're going to get 10 blocks in a, in a college basketball game like he got the other day. He's got three blocks today, as we just saw on display. But he's more than just a shot blocker. He can finish around the rim. He runs the floor well, and he rebounds. He's got seven rebounds here in the first half already. And you know, he'll continue to play. And, you know, and remember, he, he just got into the starting lineup a game ago. So he's still kind of getting acclimated to Western Kentucky as well so you know a, a lot of positives coming out of his play but the backcourt with, between Frampton and Davion McKnight in particular those two guys are handling the ball a lot and between the two of them they have six or seven turnovers so they have to clean a little bit more of that up in the second half if they want to survive this it's gonna be interesting to see some of that chess mass as it as it goes on over this uh, second half between Ryan Ritter and Rick Stansbury and how Western Kentucky wants to play defensively. It looks like the tops are going to start in a 2-3 zone look to try to keep Sharp around the basket. At the same time, when the Hilltimers have shown this zone look, UT Martin's been able to shoot them out of it. And, and you know, the zone, as I thought they would do in the second half, we're going to see 2-3 and 1-3-1 because not only does it help contest, contesting those threes, but it keeps that dribble penetration down as well. Simon just started to move in the high post before putting the ball on the floor. It's a turnover for UT Martin. Only the fifth so far for the Skyhawks. Western Kentucky had 10 in the first half. That is a, a really an inescapable part of this game. It was uh, defined in many, in many ways by Western Kentucky's turnovers and UT Martin's three-point shooting in the first 20 minutes, but still 20 to go. And the upside for the Hilltoppers would be as poor as those turnover numbers were and as well as UT Martin shot threes, it was still only a four-point deficit for the hosts at halftime. And I, I give a lot of credit to Ryan Ritter playing to Denko and Simon with two fouls each, and they both survived it. Hamilton can't hit from the elbow, and it's rebounded by Curry. It's a pretty good look, though. Denko off the heel, 
McKnight up for the rebound. Simon comes down with it, but he stepped on the baseline. Unlucky turnover for the Skyhawks. Good effort by Simon, who was in good position. And this is a pretty solid group here at UT Martin, though. K J KJ Simon, who's averaging 18 points a game. KK Curry, number zero, is averaging 16 points a game. And then Dedenko has kind of risen today, knocking down shots. He's averaging seven points a game, but playing a little bit above his pay grade today with those three-point opportunities he's gotten. Frampton, good control, drive, and finish. Curry hasn't scored yet for UT Martin, and still the Skyhawks are in front in the second half in a game in which they were heavy underdogs. Yeah, that's a bit of a surprise that he hasn't found the mark yet. 12 minutes, 0 for 4 from the field. And we mentioned those two personals he had. Henderson missed it. Simon on the offensive glass, a fourth block for Sharp. But Curry regathers it for UT Martin. Another possession for the Skyhawks. Curry thought about a three. Simon over Sharp. No fear from Simon. He's given up a foot plus a couple of inches, but he got it up over Sharp. McKnight on the attack. Through Simon, couldn't get it, and Sharp there for the tip. There's something you can't teach. He landed and was still able to get above the rim and tip it home. He, he mistimed his jump, but still came up with two. Simon on the pull-up, blocked by Sharp. That's his fifth. Sharp. Hamilton in transition and an offensive foul. Good defense by Henderson. Wipe that one clean. No basket. Just really doesn't have the angle or the space. And a great job of moving his feet by Henderson to take the charge. You know, you talk about just how tall Sharp is with those long arms, the way he's able to tip that ball up and in, even on his way down or already back on the floor. Simon shuffled his feet before putting it on the floor and travel. I think that's the kind of guy who, when he dunked for the first time in seventh grade or whatever, was so <laughs> excited. And then by the time he's in his sophomore year of high school, dunking has to get boring he's after yawning. a while. Yeah. Now, I don't know. I, I, I never got bored with dunking when I could dunk. Nope, that's no longer the case for the record. Oh, I bet you still have one or two <laughs> in you. You know, I wouldn't even know. I dare not try. Frampton for three. Short, tipped by oh. Hamilton. What a play with the left there hand. So some aggressiveness on the offensive glass. And that's about energy and effort coming out of the locker room for the Hilltoppers. Curry in the high post. Trying to go outside toward Henderson and turned it over. So that turnover bug has bit UT Martin since halftime. The Skyhawks only turned it over four times in the first half. They have four already in the first three minutes and change since the break. And, and give credit to Western Kentucky who have really turned it up defensively. They have been disruptive and not anything easy so far at the offensive end for UT Martin here in the second half. Hamilton contact and he will go to the free throw line for two where he has already made all four so far today. Great back screen set by Jamarion Sharp to free up Hamilton cutting back to the goal. Couldn't convert, but he'll have a chance for a couple of free ones. Second foul on Simon. He, Jeffries, and Curry all have two, along with Didenko. So, uh, and Nicks as well, who only played three minutes, number five. So a little bit of foul concern for Ryan Ritter, at least to be aware of. Yeah, and I had Simon with two fouls, but officially he only had one, so that explains why he was in late in that first half. So Hamilton gets the uh, free throws. And it's a 42 to 40, make it a 44 to 40 Western Kentucky lead. The Deco tried to go inside, but it's knocked away and stolen. Yet another UT Martin turnover. But the energy and the activity at the defensive end for the Hilltoppers. Hamilton fouled by Curry. Count it, plus the foul. Tyrus Hamilton is taken over. And it's not just him. The boys in white have come out of the locker room with passion and aggression, and it's paying dividends for Coach Rich Stansberry. A 10-0 run over the last minute, 47 for Western Kentucky. Hamilton has a game-high 15, and his tops lead by six.
Western Kentucky has come from behind in the early stages of the second half to take the lead over UT Martin. There was a little confusion on the official stats in the arena. It is a four-point lead for the Hilltoppers at 44-40. They have scored eight straight points over the last minute, 39, and they'll have a chance to make it nine with Jarius Hamilton at the free throw line trying to complete an old-fashioned three-point play. He's up to 15 points already, has made all six at the stripe. And left it short, but Anderson had a chance at the offensive rebound, only for it to be regathered by Curry. They come right out into some pressure here, even off the missed free throw. Just two points since halftime for UT Martin. Five turnovers. Simmons hits a big three off the bench. Simmons has shown no fear today. That's 13 to lead UT Martin. And he is shooting it with confidence, letting it fly from downtown. Another splash for Simmons. With your right, Ryan transfer. Frampton left open. Can't cash it in. And Curry got enough of the rebound to knock it to Henderson. Kobe Jeffries directing traffic. Richard freshman transfer from Olive Branch, Mississippi, finds the Russian Dodinko. He couldn't get it. Curry was pursuing the rebound all the way, and it's last off of Curry and out of bounds to send us into an official timeout. So UT Martin answers with a three from Simmons. Western Kentucky's lead is one with 15 and change to go in the second half. Back to Diddle Arena in a moment. Western Kentucky leads 44-43 over UT Martin with 15.08 to go in our second half from Diddle Arena in Bowling Green. Alongside Tim Starborough, Nate Ganner back with you on a Saturday afternoon where Western Kentucky has certainly been challenged. UT Martin led by as many as eight in the first half, but the Hilltoppers have looked great since the break in large part because of Jarius Hamilton. Jarius Hamilton, number three, averaging 15 a game. He's got 15 now. He's been much more assertive here in the second half, getting himself to the free throw line, getting on the glass. Great tip right there with the left hand. The transfer from Maryland, getting it done at the offensive end for Western. Hilltoppers have been uh, substantially better since the break. Hamilton has liked this high post against Curry. Somehow kept his pivot foot. Anderson wanted it, but couldn't hit the three. And the rebound is out of bounds to UT Martin. Anderson was begging for it. And any time a shooter has to wait like that, you worry about uh, how, how his mind is by the time the ball gets there. <laughs> yeah, but there was no passing lane. Hamilton saw him, but he was swarmed defensively. A great job on him that time. But you knew they were going to come out and ISO him. And a great job, a great recovery right there by Josh Anderson. The high riser Anderson says no to Dodenko. Extra pass for Frampton. Hits the three, and he's fouled. And if you're a Western fan, you got to love that. Hamp Frampton comes to life. Transfer from Davidson now in his second year on the hill. Filled that three-point roll beautifully for the tops last year. Shot 41%. But a struggle with the stroke so far this season. That's his second triple today. And he cashes in on the four-point play. Got his career off to a hot start as a freshman at Davidson when he became only the uh, second Wildcat in history to make 103 pointers in a single season. You can probably guess who the other guy was. Yeah. The guy in uh, place in San Francisco now, right? Yeah, Mr. Steph Curry. He, uh, he went flying by 100. Curry counted plus the foul. Big bucket for K.K. Curry, his first of the day. Leading scorer coming in for uh, UT Martin behind only K.J. Simon, the second leading scorer on the year, but uh, hasn't had a lot offensively today. K.K. really got hit on the catch, but they allowed him to get it up on the glass. Watch this as he catches it, he gets bumped. But he was able to get the continuation nonetheless, scores and can cap it off with the free throw, which he does. Seems like those continuations have been just a tick longer in college basketball this year. You, you're given just a little bit more, maybe that extra step and, to and, get the ball and, up. And I don't line. mind that. I don't mind that at all. You want offense. I mean, you don't want to legislate offense per se, but you want to give the offensive team an advantage. 
And if that, you know, you, you start taking points off the board and you got a little bit of problems. And you don't want to bail out a defender necessarily either, just get committing a foul at the last second if he doesn't have good position or yep. what have you. It's very true. It happens on the playground, or at least it did when <laughs> I was playing. Hamilton, good jump stop. Trying to use the backboard, and in the end, uh, got every piece of the rim, but it drops. Dedenko, crowd wanted to travel, and now they get it on Curry, who left early. Two for the price of one. Two travels, one called. And I tell you what, Hamilton right now, and when you look at him in terms of his size and strength, there's really no one in a blue uniform that can match up with him. And that's a great job of recognizing that by Rich Stansberry and his staff. They have done a great job of isolating him. Let's see if they can do it again. That's all for, yeah, that's all for Justice. Justice couldn't corral the pass under substantial pressure from Jeffries. And a Western Kentucky turnover, although the Hilltoppers have kept those under control much better so far in the second half, just two since the break. That's number five on McKnight, though. And, and, and really, those are the kind that you think, I know you're trying to run the play, but there's just no passing angle there. Jeffries, look at how high he had wow. to shoot that to get it over Sharp. It's way too strong, but a foul on the rebound called against Jarius Hamilton. Yeah, and Hamilton did not like that call. But nonetheless, tagged with the personal. But you're That's right. Second. You're, you're, you're right, Nate. He really had to high arc that shot just to get it over the hand, the outstretched hand of the 7'5", Jamarian Sharp. Look at that. And, and as a result, way off target. That's, a, that's an example. He didn't block the shot, but he certainly altered it. It's one thing to practice shooting over the broom, but the broom <laughs> doesn't fight back. <laughs> back to the 2-3 zone. The Dinko steps back and hits it. And what a day he's having. That was really good basketball by both teams, really, because the Denko recognizing that he would have a chance to step out to an open area, but Sharp followed him, and he still knocked it down right in his eye. McKnight, good skip pass for Hamilton. Patiently drives, can't get it, and it's rebounded by Simon. Chance for UT Martin to take the lead. Here you go, that's the guy you want to shoot right there, Dedenko, number 12. Four for eight from three. And they were able to jump back into the two, three in transition. Not easy to do off of a missed shot. Simon all the way in for the stuff. UT Martin back in front. I tell you what, that was a big time move on the baseline right at the shot blocker. And if I'm not mistaken, he might have said Jamarion Sharp is too little, which might be the first <laughs> time he's ever been told that in his life. <laughs> Did he make the too little gesture? I think he might. We're going to have to get another look at that replay when we come back on the other side of the break. 11.51 to go in the ball game. The Skyhawks are not going away. On the road, UT Martin leads 51 to 50 at Diddle Arena in Bowling Green. Simon on the attack on the baseline, goes up against the seven foot five sharp. He says he's too little boys, 51-50. Hawks in front. UT Martin leads on the road, 51-50 over Western Kentucky. David Dedinko, the uh, transfer from Georgia Tech, junior from Russia in his first year with the Skyhawks, making a rather big impression. His range has been almost limitless today, Tim. Yeah, and they've needed every bit of that. It's bringing Sharp away from the bucket, which allows other guys to drive. But the Denko has been dead-eye from downtown. And that last one was really outside the, the course of the offensive play. He just recognized that there was an open area he could get to. Sharp, who was playing center on a 2-3, still got out there, and he still was a little late. The Denko knocks it down. A great job, really, by both teams. Frampton off the pump fake, steps back, left it short, rebound by Dedenko. Jeffries for Morris. They're going to stay in the 2-3 zone. Despite that drive on the baseline by Curry, or Simmons, Simon. Jeffries hits a three. That's his first bucket of the ball game. He's been out there mostly facilitating in 20 minutes. Just one field goal attempt prior to that one. But he makes it a four-point lead for the Skyhawks. Skyhawks are not going away. 
the dead eye shooting, and they've been solid at the defensive end for the most part. They've had trouble with Hamilton, but right now they've deployed more of a, uh, it's, it's a it's a man to man, but they're really slacking off trying to help on Hamilton. Hamilton, good backdoor cut and a find by McKnight on the baseline. That's 19 for Hamilton to lead all scorers. Dribble penetration though, Nate, it hurts defenses and, and Davion McKnight is as good as anybody in Conference USA of getting two feet in the paint and breaking down the integrity of a defense. Simmons for three. All going for UT Martin. That's a dozen three-pointers for the Skyhawks shooting better than 50%. Sometimes when you want to try to steal one on the road, you have to play above your pay grade. They got a couple of guys doing that today for UT Martin to some success. And a foul call. Justice lobbed it for Sharp. And a foul called on UT Martin. I think that was Morris trying to stop Sharp from getting onto the receiving end of the lob. Yep, good recognition by the official Bill Jacobson, recognizing that the movement, freedom of movement, is something that's for the last several years now that college basketball in particular has tried to free guys up. No more bumping cutters and, and impeding guys from getting where from point A to point B. So a great job of recognizing that's what happened on that play. Western Kentucky with a basketball, but after a really good start to the second half, the Hilltoppers are down five once again. Justice swings for Hamilton with seven to shoot on Morris, all the way to the block, and he's fouled on the pass. Morris picks up a second one on this defensive possession, the freshman from uh, Mount Washington, Kentucky. Blake Bloomer, who played his high school basketball with the Central Kentucky Homeschool Program, which is based out of... Uh, Taylorsville then had a breakout 2021 summer at Hoop Dreams in Lexington. They got him a Division I scholarship offer. Not a ton of homeschool guys playing Division <laughs> I hoops. Yeah, that's for sure. You know, we talked about triple doubles, and, and Sharp got one with block shots. It's another free shot from Hamilton. He has been dominating the second half. That's 21 for Hamilton. Of course, you know, I went to Liberty. And there was a guy, the only person in the history of basketball, college basketball, to get a triple-double freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior year, a guy named Jesse Sanders. And by the way, he was homeschooled. There so, you go. There you go. Nice, nice segue there, right? Yeah. Simon attacks on Hamilton. It's a tough step back. Too strong. Sharp got a piece of the rebound and then corralled it. He has nine to go with five blocks and six points. Hamilton again, size advantage on Simon, had it knocked out of his hands, gets it to McKnight, who sticks the three to tie the game. McKnight does so many things well, not the least of which is catching and shooting. He's out there creating for others so much, he doesn't get to do that very often, but there you see it on display. Dedenko. Wow. Rebound eventually corralled by Frampton. Great. Final nine minutes, Western Kentucky can take the lead. Justice wants it and hits it. The veteran experience of Cam Justice, able to keep that ball alive to, to help Frampton get the rebound. Then he goes down and splashes one from the corner. Great job by the veteran, Justice. Here's KK Curry. Attacks on Sharp, had his shot altered, and it's out of bounds to Western Kentucky. And it was so loud in here, I, I thought everyone stopped because of a whistle, but really that was just a no call. And Curry just kind of threw that one out of bounds on his own. Talk about altering a shot, he turns it into a pass. <laughs> I imagine there are some of those moments when as an offensive player on the dribble, you say, you know, I remember what my coaches told me, I'm gonna be aggressive, I'm gonna attack the shot blocker, yeah. then you get up there and you're like, you know, I'm at the top of my jump, and he's still a ways up on me. You know, Mike Tyson said it best. Everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth, right? Hamilton for three. Western almost had three straight triples. Not a lot hasn't gone down for Hamilton since halftime. Yeah, he's been terrific here in the second half. Much more aggressive, and they've run ISO for him, and he's paying dividends at the offensive end. Curry against Anderson, lost it for a moment, kicks to Simmons, quick release, rims out, rebound tap to Anderson. And Simmons has been money all afternoon. We're almost surprised that he missed that one. Another open look. 
Final seven and a half minutes, Western Kentucky with the basketball on an 8-0 run to take a three-point lead. McKnight on the pull up. What a pretty move and shot by Davion McKnight. So silky smooth when he's looking to score. A great job by Davion McKnight. And listen to this crowd. They're loving it at Diddle Arena. Western Kentucky has trailed much of the way, but it's a 10 0 run for the Hilltoppers over the last 250. And they lead it 62 57 with 7.15 to go. Cameron Justice has given Western Kentucky the lead. See if the Hilltoppers can hold it for seven and change. Western Kentucky leads 62-57 at halftime, the, or uh, late on in the second half now. The Hilltoppers on a 10-0 run over the last two minutes and 50 seconds. They've shot threes well in the second half, Tim, but largely since halftime, it's been the Jarvis Hamilton show. It has been, because you have to give credit to Davion McKnight creating opportunities with his dribble penetration and then stepping out from downtown, able to knock it down from three. And then here he is, just a simple left-right crossover, pull-up jumper in the paint. A great job by both Hamilton and Davion McKnight to get the offense going for Western Kentucky. When the threes have gone cold for UT Martin, there just has not been a lot else. Skyhawks have scored 36 of their 57 on three-pointers today. Simon attacks on McKnight, help arrives, but oh. didn't make an impact on the shot, and he left it off the front rim. Yeah, he smoked away a golden opportunity right there, right at point blank range. Five point lead for Western Kentucky with the basketball. McKnight dragged the pivot foot, got away with it, and Hamilton nearly converted. Anderson tipped it once. Great hustle. Oh, he had him. Whoa. And then airmailed Justice on a fully cross court pass that in the end went a row or two deep. Hamilton flashed open briefly underneath, but they quickly closed that gap. That the next read was Justice in the corner, but Justice is a pretty decent athlete, but he couldn't even jump for that one. That sailed wide over his head. In some ways, this second half has been an example of the potency of the Western Kentucky offense when they do take care of the basketball. Only three turnovers since halftime. That's a really good number, especially how they looked in the first half and how they've looked of late on that the offensive end. Jeffrey nice is too easy to the rim. Final six and a half minutes of the game, and there was just no help side there for the Hilltoppers. Yeah, that was a great job of clearing out to create the isolation, and Jefferson takes advantage. Jeffries takes advantage. McKnight gets a screen from Hamilton. Western Kentucky very small at the moment. Hamilton gets position inside. He's fouled, and Count the it. basket is good. And again, Nate, recognition by Western. They involve Hamilton in the ball screen knowing that UT Martin is switching everything regardless of size. And once he gets the mouse in the house, it's go to work. Hamilton in the paint converts and he gets fouled as a result as well. So right there, great advantage. Just leaps right over him. Nothing really Jeffries could do with You've all made the that. point, too, a couple of times that uh, Sometimes in basketball, we talk about size mismatches, and we get a little bit caught up in height because obviously that's so critical. But uh, Hamilton has the, the broad shoulder advantage, if you will, especially <laughs> when UT Martin's trying to guard him one-on-one -on -one in the man-to-man -man with, a, with a guard. He's often had, yeah, three or four inches, but probably 40 or 50 pounds as well. Yeah, it's just pure strength. He's bully, playing bully basketball right now. And now Western into a switching man-to-man. So really a great job of mixing up the looks that UT Martin has had to attack here, especially in the second half by Coach Rich Stansberry. Right here, the dribble penetration. Lost that one off his leg, but they're going to say it was caused by the reach-in by McKnight. So UT Martin basketball, but the Skyhawks may be feeling the pressure a little bit now. Down by five with five and a half to go. Curry tried to shovel it out toward Andre, who's able to keep it in the front court. Seven to shoot. Jeffries oh, attacks past Ooh. Hamilton for two at the end of the shot clock, and Jeffries gets to the rim again. The lane is red, but it was more like the Red Sea right there, parting. Moses leading the way. 
Three-point lane for Western Kentucky with a basketball. McKnight has been comfortable on the pull-up, and he's comfortable again. He's so tough. And these are not easy shots. Davion McKnight now with 16 on the evening. That and five assists as well. Does have the five turnovers. That's uh, really been constant for him this year. About one assist for every turnover. The assist numbers are great, though. Morris for three. And it's rebounded by McKnight. Morris got a good look off that pin down screen. A uh, design play. Couldn't convert, but now a five point lead for Western trying to extend. Justice bumps, count it. Count the best of ten. Justice. Largest lead of the day for Western Kentucky. It's seven with four and a half to go. You're seeing a team that is in attack mode. Great job right there, turning the corner. Cam Justice using the left hand. And with that ball screen, when you set a ball screen with Jarius Hamilton, it changes things. Both defenders stay with him because he's such a threat, which allowed Cameron Justice to deliver. Western Kentucky has shot the free throws much better today as well. 11 of 13 of the foul line. And to UT Martin, this probably indicates as well as anything just how perimeter-centric the Skyhawks' offense has been. They've only attempted one free throw this entire game. Wow. And they, they and to their credit, they didn't make the free throw. Though, yes. Right? <laughs> yeah, so they're 100%, I suppose. But it's an eight-point lead for Western Kentucky. And uh, really all the Hilltoppers' improvement since halftime, just three turnovers since the break. They've shot the ball a little bit better. And Hamilton and McKnight in combination have just been too good and too consistent. They've won too many of those one-on-one -on -one battles. Is it surprising to you at all that we haven't seen UT Martin mix up the defense a little bit with how comfortable Western Kentucky has looked in the second half? Well, it's not easy to mix up defenses. You have to practice it. It has to be a uh, part of your DNA. That is a part of Rick Stansberry coach team's DNA. They make sure that they throw a lot of different looks at you. Coach Ritter, a younger coach, may not have his team ready to just throw various defenses and be able to execute those defenses. So they're a man-to-man -man team, although they play some zone today. So you do what you do. So it's not necessarily a, a, uh, a formula. It's what you do well that you continue to do. Yeah, it's a little bit of an advantage maybe at this stage for Western Kentucky with more experienced coaching staff and more importantly, a team that's been together for the most part for a couple of years. Whereas as we talked about, UT Martin, even compared to the mass turnover that we see in college basketball from yeah. year to year these days, they stand out. They don't have a single player back from last year, don't have a single coach back from last year. So this is a group maybe then that's behind the learning curve a little bit, certainly compared to a team like Western Kentucky. Sure, and what a great test this is for them on the road against a top caliber Conference USA team. And they've done well so far, although it's starting to slip away. But they're still in this thing. They just need to knock down a few more shots from the perimeter. But Western has made it tough, breathing fire at the defensive end. A couple of more Conference USA matchups on the schedule for UT Martin. They have a home at home with Middle Tennessee still to come. Three off the heel from Jeffries, and it's rebounded by Hamilton. A pair of ranked Power 5 opponents on the schedule for the Skyhawks as well. They lost to Tennessee in the season opener, and then uh, just before Christmas, they're going to head to Columbus to see Ohio State. Western is shooting 61% here in the second half. McKnight and Hamilton, the guilty parties, if you will. Anderson goes out to Frampton. Justice, top three on the move, left it short, and Dedenko the rebound. And that was tough. You mentioned he, he was on the move. He did get his feet set, though, miraculously, considering how his body was going in one direction, but couldn't convert. Curry that shuffled one. his feet before the bucket, wave it off. A travel called against Curry. Tough sledding for that young man today. He, he's been remarkably consistent so far in his first year with UT Martin. Double figures in five out of six games. A couple of times he's gone for 22 plus, but just three on one of seven shooting today. Western Kentucky leads by eight. Three and a half minutes to go in the second half from Diddle Arena in Bowling Green where Western Kentucky has come from behind in the second half to lead 69-61 over UT Martin. Trying to get back to 500 before another ESPN Plus matchup Tuesday evening, 7 o'clock against Rhodes College, a late addition to the schedule. And uh, then some more big mid-major games still coming up, Tim, uh, with Eastern Kentucky coming in town next weekend as part of this extended homestand. 
And then Buffalo the following week, a couple of teams that have been really good the last couple of years. Of course, Buffalo has established themselves as a mid-major powerhouse the last five or six seasons. So uh, certainly some excitement on this schedule. That's even before you get to matchups at a neutral site with Ole Miss and then uh, in this arena against Louisville. It's a, a star-studded non-conference flight for Rick Stansbury's Hilltoppers this year. Yeah, not, not anything different, though, right? Western tries to play the better teams if they're willing to play them. I give Louisville credit for having the ability to come <laughs> down Interstate 65 to play here in Bowling Green. That's going to be something to watch. A lot of Power 5 teams haven't uh, had success in this building in recent years. Of course, Arkansas dropped one here. Wisconsin did a couple of years ago. Justice on the entry pass to Hamilton. McKnight with seven to shoot. Justice attacks with the left hand for two. Just a grown man with the basketball in a big moment. Cam Justice getting to the rim again. He's got 13 off the bench. Jeffries is fouled. What a big addition for uh, Rick Stansbury at that stage of the season to be able to add somebody a couple of games in who's so ready to contribute, who's so comfortable with the system, yeah. brings all the experience that he does. And Not many teams are going to add a guy like that a couple of games in. And, and they had Keith Williams, who's still trying to sort out some issues with the NCAA, a Cincinnati transfer, uh, who was a 1,200-point scorer, basically, in his career. They would love to have his services, six-foot-five guard. But without him, and, we, and they still may get him as well at some point. You would think a guy who was second team in the uh, American Athletic Conference a year ago could make an awful lot of noise at Conference USA. Agreed. Athletically and a scoring wise. Turnover there. Still hoping to get Keith Williams. Of course, haven't seen any of uh, Zion Harmon either, the uh, prized recruit, top 50 prospect in the country who picked Western Kentucky over uh, Kansas and Louisville. Yeah, out of D.C. Very good product. Not uh, any timetable yet on him. Dodenko misses it. Weren't given a really a timetable on either Harmon or on Williams, but uh, certainly you'd hope that both of them are able to make some kind of impact on this season. Both have uh, tons of potential, although obviously different stages of their careers. Yeah, Harmon could redshirt. Williams is losing games, but this is his last year no matter what. Good kick out for Frampton. One shooter finds the other. How about the justice to Frampton connection? It's a double-digit lead for Western Kentucky. Timeout, Ryan Ritter. Luke Frampton has one of the more aesthetic three-point looking three-point shots when it's going in. That thing was a thing of beauty. Got a low pass, able to scoop it up off of his, his socks. Watch how low this ball or a little late with that. But he was able to splash it from downtown despite the less than accurate pass. But good shooters find a way. And this kid is one of the better ones in the country when he gets it going. That's one of those things that they sometimes say you don't find very often, even among good shooters at the college level, that can differentiate good shooters at the college level from the good shooters at the professional level, is their ability to hit those shots even off of difficult catches. A lot of college guys can hit them off the pocket. When you got to go down and make the catch at the ankles, it could be a different story. Yep, and, and Frampton, he can shoot them off the run. He can shoot them with his body going a different direction. I mean... He just lit up the Atlantic 10 a couple of seasons ago. Did a great job his first year here at Western Kentucky last year as well. And as statistically, you just know he's too good of a shooter to continue to miss these shots. And already you're starting to see him really find that mark. UT Martin has gone cold from three, and things have unraveled for the Skyhawks at the offensive end of the floor. Yes, that's Frampton it. to the Whoops. rim, and he's fouled by Jeffries. Frampton wanted all of it. Headed straight to the rim, looking for the dunk. And he went down, holding the side of his face. Maybe he just took a hit as he was going up for the dunk. Get a second look. Luke Frampton had cruel intentions in his head right there. Trying to put Jeffries on an Instagram shot. Couldn't convert. To the spill as a result as well, but he'll go to the line and shoot a couple of free ones. And the officials are actually going to look at this to see if there was any excessive contact. 
And after looking at those, I think that was a basketball play. What about you, Nate? Yeah, I, I was going to say, I feel a little bit bad for Jeffries because you can see on the replay, it was definitely an elbow to the face, but I don't think there was any intent on that. And it doesn't look like the referees are going to give anything. Common, common foul. I can read Bill Jacobs' lips. And I like the fact that they adjudicated that fairly quickly, as did I. But it's easy for me because I'm sitting over here in the analyst seat. I don't have a striped shirt on. As you see, going for the ball, yes, there, there, there was some contact above the head, and, and that's no consolation to, to, to Luke Frampton, though, right? He still feels it. But there's no punitive damage, if you will. Just awarded the, the usual two free throws. I think when you take off like that with those kind of cruel intentions, sometimes uh, you take a hit for your trouble. You can't blame Jeffries for being physical defending his rim. Absolutely. Nobody wants to be on anybody's Instagram profile pic. Not a good look. 13-point late for Western Kentucky, largest of the day. Curry. Kicks for Simmons, and he sticks another three. Simmons has a new UT Martin career high, 21. Who is this kid? Of course, very early in his career. It's one thing you look at his numbers and you say, yeah, okay, he had uh, he had a nice game in that win this week for UT Martin uh, against Carver College, but they won by 60 points. Who's to say exactly what that means? Maybe you have 18 in that game. Not a lot of standout offensive performances otherwise, but my goodness. How about 21 on the road against Western Kentucky? He's backing that up and looking like a big offensive weapon off the bench, showing out for all the D2 boys. Oh, it's no doubt he can score because he did it at Lenore Ryan at a great clip. So different difference playing Lenore, Lenore Ryan and playing a Conference USA game or an OBC game. But boy, as he stepped it up, he shoots mostly threes. Of his 15 makes coming into today, 11 of them were from downtown. He's actually shooting better slightly from downtown than he is overall at both around 33% coming in. Those numbers will go up now that he's knocked down a heavy clip today. But yeah, certainly Coach Ritter has found a nice little weapon from beyond the arc, at least for today. Simmons uh, played his high school ball at Powerhouse Word of God in Raleigh, which has produced uh, numerous pros, including John Wall, and uh, T.J. Warren, he's only listed at 5'11", but he's got that nice quick release, even though it's sort of a low release for a guy who's already given up a lot of height at this level, but he gets rid of it quickly. And it's nice to have a consistent double-figure score. He came in average of 10 points. And nice to have a double-digit score coming off the bench for you. You know, uh, Western has that and Cam Justice, right? So, you know, who we haven't seen a lot of is, is Butts, number one. I think he's nursing an injury. Yeah, Jaylen he didn't Butts. play Wednesday in that game yeah. against Alabama a and Jalen Butts with, uh, with knee soreness. Another transfer from DePaul. I haven't seen him today, but he played a pretty substantial role the first two games of the year. Hamilton in the trap oh, gets rid of it to Justice. Dangerous pass. Dangerous pass, yeah. And Justice is fouled. And you know, if you're, if you're Rick Stansberry, that ball is in the air seemingly forever. Oh. But finally falls into the hands of Cameron Justice. So Justice will go to the free throw line where uh, he actually missed his first free throw of the year. So that one he made to complete the three-point play earlier in the second half was his first converted free throw of the season. But, of course, an excellent shooter, really, from every level. And one of those guys who's fun to watch going through his warm-up as a result. That's You get tickets to a ball game, and you, and you show up early for uh, batting practice time, if you will. The guys you're going to see out there are uh, the 40% three-point shooters, and you get to watch them start from all the way into the restricted area, just getting that little flick of the wrist down and, and how deliberate they are in backing up, how focused they are, and you realize just how many shots have to go down every single day for about, them to go down in the game. It's about routine, right? Just like with baseball. Get those repetitions in until it becomes almost rote memory. You can do it with your eyes closed or in your sleep. Justice converts both free throws. And now inside the final 45 seconds, Henderson way off the mark. 12-point lead for Western Kentucky, and Jarius Hamilton is fouled, so he'll go to the line with a chance to extend his game-high 23 points to go with 11 rebounds. He's had an excellent afternoon. The transfer from Maryland.
Hamilton's free throw shooting has tailed off just a little bit since the early stages of the game. He hit his first four. Now six of nine at the stripe today. And he has 24 and 11. A couple of assists to boot. Western Kentucky 14 assists on 28 made field goals. There's a turnover. Justice out ahead. And he will lay it up and in. That's 17 off the bench for Justice. Four different Hilltoppers have 16 or more. Frampton McKnight with 16. Justice with 17 and Hamilton 24. Simmons misses and a foul underneath on the rebound called against Luke Frampton. That's only the sixth against Western Kentucky in the second half. So no free throws coming yet for UT Martin. It's a 15 point Hilltoppers lead with 26 seconds to go. We will hear from Jarius Hamilton after the ball game. Tim Scarborough standing by and he will uh, Talk to the senior from Charlotte. Simon cannot get it. That three-point shooting really went cold for UT Martin. At one point, the Skyhawks were 12 of 23. They've hit just one of their last nine from three-point range, and that, in the end, is the difference. Western Kentucky, after trailing in the second half and by as many as eight in the first half, comes from behind post halftime and the Hilltoppers win it by a final of 81 to 66 over UT Martin at Diddle Arena to improve to three and three. Once again, uh, in a moment, we will hear from Jarius Hamilton who will be talking to Tim Scarborough uh, on the floor after Hamilton had a game high 24 and 11 rebounds. Jarius uh, Certainly our player of the game, although again, he headlined four different Hilltoppers who uh, had 16 or more to go with Frampton, McKnight, and Justice. But our player of the game is Jarius Hamilton, and he is standing by with Tim Scarborough. Player of the game today, a beautiful performance by you. Talk about the adjustment your team made at halftime. It appeared that they really tried to get you the basketball in the paint. Yeah, we just realized that they really had nobody in there that, that was strong enough really can contain with our bigs. You know, our bigs can post up on anybody. We, we really believe that. So we just came out and made an emphasis to get easier shots. They were fouling us a lot, so I was laying a lot of free throws. So that's all we were trying to do in the second half. Defensively, it looked like you guys really turned up the energy coming out of the locker room. You went in trailing. What did Rick say to you guys to really get you to start playing at that end? Well, we just had to wake up. You know, it was an early game. It's our first time playing this early this year. So we had to really wake up, get ourselves going. You know, everybody's gone for break, so the atmosphere wasn't as crazy as it usually is. So we just had to wake ourselves up, and I feel we did that in the second half. A lot of good basketball left to play. We'll let you get settled. Great job tonight. That was Jarris Hamilton, player of the game. Back to you, Nate. 81-66, Western Kentucky takes it over UT Martin. Jarris Hamilton, 24-11 and 11 to lead the way for the Hilltoppers. Thank you very much for our entire HSSN crew. Our producer, Raina Johnson, and everybody back in the truck. Nate Gatter saying so long from Diddle Arena on this Saturday afternoon. Hope you've enjoyed it from us and uh, our partner, my partner, Tim Scarborough, did an excellent job down on the floor with Jarius Hamilton. Want to thank Tim for his efforts, as well as Raina and everybody in the crew. A fantastic second half for Western Kentucky. Really cleaned up those turnovers. Only four after the break. Very good at the defensive end of the floor, and the Hilltoppers were efficient offensively, led by Hamilton with big help from Justice McKnight and Frampton in the second half, and the Hilltoppers improved to 3-3. Three and 88-66, three. Western Kentucky wins it over UT Martin. Back at it Tuesday night against Rhodes.